Welcome back, true seeker. I wear myself out with the flat earthers. I really want to help these people, but they truly seem to want to remain ignorant and logical. Here's Dustin Bennett. This video is explaining the way the North Star operates and why it seems that it's in a fixed position in the sky. So he responds, the Big Dipper is in the same spot every night. If we were revolving around the sun, we would see a new set of stars every three to four months, would we not? The stars are the same every night, no matter what time of year, and it must be a coincidence that the sun and moon are the exact same size also. Okay. I don't know if Dustin's ever looked at the stars before, but they're not in the same spot every night. And over the course of the year, they change. With regards to the Big Dipper, here's how the Big Dipper is throughout the seasons relative to the North Star. If you go out in the spring and you look up at the sky, the Big Dipper will be in this place relative to the North Star. In the summer, you know, it'll be here relative to the North Star. Just like you see, fall, North Star, winter, North Star. You know, I, I, I don't know where you flat earthers come from. I, I really don't think any of you have ever paid attention to the sky. I think you're getting all your information from people on YouTube. And for some reason, you want to believe these people and the nonsense they're preaching. And, you know, the stars are well understood. They're something that have been mapped for thousands of years. It's how they figured out the precession of the equinoxes happens every 2,160 years. Right now we're in the age of Pisces. That's because at the spring equinox, the vernal equinox, the constellation that's above our heads is Pisces. And that age began around 0 AD. So somewhere around 2160 AD will enter into the age of Aquarius. And at that point, it'll be Aquarius that's above our heads at the vernal equinox. And then 2160 years later, the next, you see? And over the course of thousands of years, 25,920 years after that point, you know, you get a perfect reset. So, the stars, the heavens above, they are slowly rotating. And as we orbit the sun, and we look out at the stars, their location is shifting. Which is why the Big Dipper rotates around the North Star. And again, the North Star is at the center point. It's like a merry-go-round. If you spin the merry-go-round and you're high up above and you put a child on the inside of the merry-go-round and a child on the outer ring, from up above you're going to be able to see the child on the outer ring making a big circle. But the child in the middle, they're hardly going to move. That child in the middle is the North Star. The child on the outside is the Big Dipper. So, you know, Dustin... This stuff's not even hard to look up. This information's not hard to acquire. I, I don't know why you guys... Uh, this is where I get sick of flat earthers. They just write these statements that aren't true, yet they, they write them like they're the gospel. So sorry, Dustin. I mean, you gotta... I don't know. You got to know what you're talking about, not just make statements that are false. And then this final sentence, and it must be a coincidence that the sun and moon are the exact same size also. You know, this guy's arguing that the earth's flat, so I guess the sun and moon being the same size in the sky proves that the earth is flat? <laughs> I don't know where the logic in that statement is either. It, it is interesting that the sun and moon are the same size in the sky. You know, the sun's supposed to be, what, 400 times bigger than the moon? And they say that the reason it's perfect is because the sun's 400 times further away than the moon, something like that. Perhaps it is, you know. But I don't understand how this statement would make the earth flat. So, again, flat earthers, all... 
all of your reasoning for thinking the earth is flat is you're misinformed, you're not being logical, you don't have enough information, you don't have enough facts. Dustin said the Big Dipper never moves in the sky. It's just completely false. Here's what I suggest for you flat earthers. Find someone that has a supply of magic mushrooms. Take a very small dosage. You know, don't... And you can read online about varieties and recommended dosage. Whatever the recommended dosage is, just take half. Take half that amount. And when you take magic mushrooms, the, the worst case scenario is your stomach might get a little bit uncomfortable. Some people, it bothers their stomach. But you won't get the effects until about an hour after you take them. And honestly, one of the best ways to take them is just boil hot water and put the mushrooms in there and let the mushrooms soak in and then just drink the water like tea. You'll, you'll get almost the whole effect in the mushroom. And then it's not, you know, a lot of people don't like eating mushrooms. But you got to make sure you get the mushrooms from reliable people. You don't want the wrong thing and you don't want to get poisoned from mushrooms. But anyway, take magic mushrooms and, you know, on, do it on a clear night, a warm night, or, or dress warm. And watch the night sky. And watch the stars move. You know? They do move. <laughs> and... I bet you it'll be a really enjoyable and truly magical experience for you. Magic mushrooms are one of the greatest thing in the world. They are, you know, they enhance your mind absolutely when they're done right. You don't need to eat a ton and, and way overdo it and, you know, start hallucinating. But if you just take a nice light dosage and you get the impact that you will know when it sets in, and you do something like watch the night sky, you'll see. You'll see. It'll be a very memorable experience. And I bet you for a lot of you flat earthers, you'll get over your whole flat earth misconception in an evening. The best variety of magic mushrooms are called cyanescence. Cyanescence. If you can find that variety, I'll tell you what the perfect dosage is. Seven tenths of a gram. Very light. You'll see. Take that hour later. You'll be good to go. And then the next time you do it, eat one and a half grams. Double that dosage. And you'll have an even better time. But you don't want to do too many more than that. Then you can get into crazy town. And understand, every variety of magic mushroom is different, the dosage. You know, that's for cyan essence. You know. And all that information's out on the web. But Dustin, I think Dustin needs some magic mushrooms, and I think he needs a night under the stars. <laughs> and he won't be saying things like this. Because this is just nonsense. Alright, truth seeker. Until next time.